In my previous stream, I was talking about that it's very, very important to basically decouple your transportation layer with your business layer, with your business logic layer. And all the people in the chat were basically like, huh? What the hell is the transportation layer? They have no clue. And I thought, man, this is actually very important to understand. So that's why I'm going to basically make this small little video emphasizing what uh, these things are. So before we continue, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments, and of course, jump into the Discord community. All the links are in the description. All right, so basically, uh, in the previous stream, what we are doing, there was some kind of an assessment that somebody uh, has gotten uh, enabled to apply for a job, and he sent it to me, and I want to make, on the stream, we basically uh, made the first part of the assessment, right? And I was explaining, it was basically a small uh, microservice where you needed to add and it needs to return a bit price and an ID and yada, yada, yada. If you want to know the details, check out the stream and then you can follow along, right? So basically, um, and I said, guys, listen, it's very important to basically decouple your transportation layer from the business layer and people were freaking out. What the hell is a transportation layer? Right. So basically, in the spectrum of, uh, I don't know, microservices, actually in the spectrum of the web, we have basically a request and a response, right? And if you request something, that thing needs to be transported, right? That needs to be hit your endpoint, your server, whatever. You know what I mean? And most of the time in, in, in the web, it's going to be HTTP, right? HTTP and most likely over JSON, of course, uh, in the microservices domain, in the microservices spectrum where everything is behind the gateway most of the time, you're going to communicate in other protocols, right? There, it could be JSON over HTTP, but the transportation layer could also be some something like a protobuffer, gRPC, it could be uh, Trift or maybe Kafka and uh, whatever, right? Uh, RabbitMQ, you name it, um, there is always a protocol available for you. So basically, that's the transportation layer. So each time, um, let me show you what we have here, right? Um, so we decoupled this completely. So we have handle add request, right? Uh, which is basically what is going on here. Whew. So in this case, we have handle add request, which is basically uh, a method function attached to our add request handler. And what this is going to do is basically once you hit that endpoint, uh, it's going to call. This is the most. This don't think about that. It's this is the most important thing. It's going to call our service, and it's going to call the add function with the add ID, right? This is basically just a random stuff. Normally the user would provide that, but hey, this is an example, right? And uh, if it's if there's a problem here, we're gonna just return JSON, right? And otherwise we are going to return an add response uh, and fill in the variables that are basically returned here and write that back as JSON. So very important to take away here is that we could easily return an add response directly from our add business logic. The problem is that if you if you don't want to have friends with benefits, you know what I mean? You want to have a complete separation of concerns, right? The business logic should return data that is basically not being tied to your transportation, right? And that's a transportation where you're basically going to return a, ser a JSON serialized object of what the business logic has produced, right? So let us take an, uh, an example here, right? Uh, let's go here, boom. So basically the ad service is an interface and you can see the only thing it does, it's basically, it's very specific, right? We're gonna add, we're gonna get, we're gonna pass in a UUID and it's going to return a UUID of float64, which is the bit price in this case, uh, and an error, right? And then we have, of course, our implementation here and the implementation is here, right? The ad service, of course, it's a structure, there is no state, yada, yada, it's also very simple high level example, right? Um, in a real world example, there could there will be more state uh, most of the time, right? So basically we call uh, this ad service and we implement our ad thingy and you can see it has this function signature just like the interface and yeah, the business logic, guys, it, it's an example. We generate a random bit price, uh, a random ID and we just return it, right? But very important to take away is that we, do, we do not have any instrumentation in our business logic, right? We don't have any serialization, no login, nothing. It's pure business logic. Very simple, very specific, a very separation of concerns. So how do we do the, the logging? Because if you're gonna go into a production environment in a company, most of the time you need to provide a complete 
uh, production-ready service or microservice doesn't really matter, um, which should have instrumentation, logging, it should have the whole the whole shebang, you know what I mean? And um, well, it's very simple because this is an interface. And again, that's why I'm emphasizing on interfaces are very, very, very important to learn in Golang because it's the bread and butter is what they say. This logging middleware is also an ad service, right? It's also this interface. It implements the same function. Look at that. You see the login middleware calls add exactly the same. Of course, we have this function. How do you call it? It's return values are captured here. Uh, named return val uh, values. Why? Because we can do this defer func, and I already have a video about that. I'm also teaching this in the full time GoDev, especially in the microservice section. Um, this is basically going to wrap as a middleware on top of your business logic, which is just going to lock out the values that are being produced by your business logic. Right? So you don't have any co mingling of logic with your business logic, your instrumentation logic logging logic but also very important transportation logic which is this handler here right in the ideal scenario this handler would be a little bit better i understand um there are some fancy tricks but just for the sake of demonstration this is this right you need to accept it like it is right now so that's basically it right a very very important topic to understand is that you can use interfaces and you can change them you can people are going to say maybe it's the middleware pattern i don't know maybe it's going to be hey this is hexagonal architecture hey maybe maybe i don't care about the patterns the only thing i care about is that i know when i need to implement this and that it's actually very important if you're doing this in a production environment right um that's basically it guys so very important transportation layer is the way you're going to communicate with your services most of the time http json um serialization protocol with microservices this most of the time are lying behind the gateway and the communication protocol is a little bit lower level grpc protobuf trift kafka you name it right uh, and that's why it's important you can separate the business logic with the transportation logic because then you can provide multiple you can support multiple transportation logics for the same business domain, for the ba for the same business logic, if you know what I mean. And if you need to change something or you need to add or remove it, you do not need to touch your business logic and visa versa. I hope it's a very short video, very important. Check out the stream if you want to learn more about this. Check out the videos, check out the full-time GoDev, whatever you want. It's a very important aspect you need to understand, not only for Golang, but for actually in any, any language you're going to write, um, need to have some kind of a separation of concerns. Thank you for watching. I'm looking forward to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.